I think the motion sketch panel is one of the most useful functions of After Effects that hardly ever gets used. Honestly, I don't use it that much, but when I do, it is so nice to have. Now I've created a comprehensive PDF that you can download for free covering absolutely every panel in After Effects. It's a really great way to get an overview of everything After Effects has to offer. You can find the link to that down in the description. And everything on my site for the month of January is 20% off. That includes my courses, my tools, and my course bundle. So definitely take advantage of that while the sale is still active. Now what the Motion Sketch panel allows you to do is capture motion with your mouse. It's basically 2D motion capture. Let's take a look at the controls. So we have capture speed at, 100% is the default. This is going to capture the motion of your mouse at a one-to-one -one ratio. Whatever speed you record at, that's what it's going to play back at. But we could increase or decrease this to speed up or slow down the playback after it's been recorded. Let's just leave it at 100% for now and we'll come back to it. Next option is smoothing. So this is going to control how much of your actual movement it's going to take when it's recorded. The higher the smoothing value, the less keyframes it's going to produce and the smoother motion it should produce. And then we have some view options to show what we have as a wireframe as well as include the background. I'm going to show you all of this. Let's just leave it as is for now. I need to choose a layer to make this start capture button active. Once I have that, I can click start capture and nothing has happened yet. You'll notice my info panel automatically open and it's letting me know that I need to click to begin capture. So I can move my mouse anywhere in the comp or anywhere in the comp viewer. And as soon as I click down while I'm dragging, it's going to be recording my motion. So I'm going to start over here on this dot. I'm gonna click and drag and it's playing back. You can see it down in the timeline and it's just recording everything that I do and I can let go and the motion sketch stops recording. And that created a whole lot of keyframes. If I press U to bring them them all up, there you can see each and every one of them. It's a lot. But if I play it back, we're going to get motion that's very authentic to the way that I was moving my mouse. This kind of thing would take a lot of time to do manually with keyframes by hand, especially for something that should look like a mouse pointer, because that's what this graphic is. Now it's going to continue to record until I let go of the mouse or until we've reached the duration of the work area. So looking at the start and duration, it's set to 0 and 10.01 because that was the duration of my work area. But if I move this around, now you can see that is reflected up in the motion sketch. So if I undo back to before I had these keyframes and I just redo my work area to a smaller section, let's just say a couple of seconds, start that capture again, it's only going to record through that work area and automatically stop. So that's a little extra control that you have there. Now, what happens if we undo and reset our work area and change the capture speed down to 50%, start capture and then record again? You'll see things feel a little bit laggier. And if I let go and play this back, it's now playing at double the speed that I recorded it. So capturing at 50% and then playing it back at 100% is actually going to make it faster. If we go the other direction and I change this speed up to 200%, start the capture and then record, you're gonna notice there are a lot more dots being recorded and it's much smoother. That playhead was also moving a lot faster through my timeline. And now we're going to get half the speed as we're playing back. It's generating twice as many keyframes. But let's talk about the keyframes. I'm gonna reset that back to 100% speed and then take a look at smoothing. So I'll undo to get rid of the keyframes and let's just bump this up to say five and see what difference it gives us. So I'll start the capture, click and drag, and then let go. And you can instantly tell there are far fewer keyframes being produced here. It's still quite a bit, a lot more than if I were to animate this by hand, but that smoothing value really reduces it and can create smoother motion. Let's increase that a whole lot. We can turn this all the way up to 1000, but let's just go around 700 and try that again. So start the capture, click and drag, and watch what happens when I let go. We only got four keyframes that time. So let's play this back. And clearly that is not the same motion that I recorded. So that is something that you can play around with to kind of find a sweet spot, maybe somewhere in the 200s is gonna work better for you. And notice that I didn't even undo my keyframes there. It's going to overwrite whatever you had. So make sure that if you're gonna do multiple passes at motion sketch, that you have your work area set so that you don't accidentally overwrite any keyframes frames that you've already captured and are happy with. 
but that 200 range, that seems to add a good number of keyframes while smoothing things out. Now, there's no easing in there. That would take a lot more of performance from me if I wanted to go faster and slower than I'm gonna have to do that with my mouse. It's really dependent on how you are performing that action in order to create something that feels a little bit smoother and organic. Now I'm just gonna turn that back down to one and let's take a look at these two options right here. So show wireframe is what we've been seeing. When I capture, we see that box, but I lose access to everything else. If I turn background on though, and I start the capture, now I can actually see the background contents and move around them. So these two dots, I can now move them around and see that in my reference, which is really great if you need precise placement of your object as you're doing that motion capture. So I typically have that checked on. The wireframe checkbox enables the wireframe preview as you're clicking and dragging. Without it, you're just going to see that motion trail that's left behind. Again, I think it makes more sense to keep that enabled so that you can see what you're actually doing as you're performing. Now, another way that you can smooth things out and not be locked in to whatever smoothing value you have set here is by using the smoother panel, but that's a topic for another video. That's it for Motion Sketch. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.